I got a request from a student who wanted to know how to use Henderson Hasselbach to determine a partial charge on an amino acid. So let's take um, glutamic acid as an example. The pKa of the R group is 4.2. If you were trying to find the net charge on this amino acid at 4.8, those numbers are really close to each other. They're not two pH units away which we've talked about before as resulting in all or nothing for the deprotonated or protonated groups. Being close together, you'd have to use Henderson-Hasselbach. So pH equals pKa plus log of A minus over HA. The pH that we're working with is 4.8. The pKa of the R group is 4.2, and the deprotonated group is COO minus, and the protonated group is COOH. You subtract 4.2 from 4.8 and get 0.6, equals the log of COO minus over COOH. Take the anti-log of 0.6, and you get 4 represents the ratio of COO minus over COOH. You know that there's a 1 in the denominator, so you can write that in there. From this point, there's two ways to do this. One way is to cross multiply, and you get 4 COOH equals 1 COO minus. So in this mes method, we just cross multiply. When you do that, you know that both forms add up to 1, as in the whole. So however much CO minus you have plus however much COH you have equals 1. Here you have CO minus, and you know CO minus is equal to 4 COOH. So you can plug that in right here. Our goal here is to turn everything into just one unknown so we can solve for the one variable. So now we can do the algebra. Let's turn this into 5 COOH equals 1. So the amount of COOH is 1 over 5 or 0.2. That means the amount of COO minus is 1 minus 0.2, which is 0.8. If we're calculating partial charge, we look at these groups. The COH group has no charge, it's neutral. The CO minus group has a negative charge. So this 0.08 is a negative 0.8 charge influence on the overall charge of this amino acid. Going back to this ratio, the other way you can do this, so go with the way that makes most sense to you. They're just mathematically different. So the other way is to think that there's four CO minuses for every COOH that you have. So four parts of this and four parts and one part of this giving you a total of five parts so four of every five parts is COO minus and one of every five parts is COOH that ends up giving you that same answer that you got from the other method 
a little bit faster, but go with whatever method makes most sense to you. To do this problem fully, you'd have to look at the other ionizable groups as well and add up all the charges. I got a request just to focus on the Henderson-Hasselbach part, and so that's what this video is talking about.